What's going on, y'all? So we are back again, like I said, um, for the Real Housewives of New Jersey. Look, let me tell you something. I almost forgot that this shit came on today. But, um, okay. And this is probably going to be a short review because it really wasn't nothing to it. You know, everybody is just being reintroduced. I'm sorry. Let me turn this off before I get interrupted. Uh, everybody's just being reintroduced to the scene. And, you know, if you been a long time uh, watching from the beginning, uh, from season one or whatever, you can tell, you can see the visible changes that happened from season one to season six, you know, around season three or season four, I believe. That's when Melissa and Joe came. And then, um, remember, Danielle was in season one. I don't know if she was in season two, but I'm pretty sure it was season one. Who gives a fuck? But, you know, the main characters, Caroline, Jacqueline, Dina from season one, Danielle from season one, Teresa, and, um, bitch, if it was somebody else, I can't remember. So, no longer there is Danielle. She was gone. Then we get Melissa and, um, Joe. Then in that season, after we get Kathy and Richie. Now, this season, you know... There is no more Caroline. There is no more Jacqueline. And I can understand that because <sighs> no shade. But when the season, when the series first started, I like Caroline because, you know, she was very outspoken. She was older. She just didn't give a fuck, okay? You know, but towards the last couple of seasons and the shit that was going on, I woke up like this. Wait a fucking minute, bitch. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Flawless. Let me stop playing. But, um, y'all, let me just tell y'all something. It's Jack. Beyonce concert is coming up next Thursday. And I'm, st I'm still trying to mentally prepare myself because, look, I'm touching somebody. Th that's all. That's all. That's all. Okay, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. But anyway, I'm just saying. Woo. Okay. But. Yeah, you know, I like Caroline because, you know, she was very outspoken and all that shit. But it got to, like, the, the, um, last season, she was very much irrelevant, if you ask me. Meaning that I, her storyline, it was just a little bit too boring for me. You know, they was a little bit too normal for all the drama that be going on in the show. And she really wasn't there the season before. That's when she was starting to get on my nerves a little bit. And after last season, I was like, yeah, she just needs to go. Kathy and Richie, you know, they was cool when they first came on. I think in season four, it was okay. But then by season five, you could kind of tell that they was going to get edged out because they really didn't bring that much to it either. You know, they had a little drama with Teresa, but then everybody kind of fixed their shit. But the main drama was Melissa and Teresa, and they kind of fixed their shit too. Finally got their shit together after last season. And basically this season, you know, well, Jacqueline too. Jacqueline was, oh my God. <laughs> I didn't really like Jacqueline, but I did dislike her. You know, I was pretty much here for her for a little bit. But then, you know, towards the end of the season, like, after they had that big blowout, and then last season, all she did was fucking cry. One of these seasons, all she did was cry. I was just over it. I was like, girl, look at my hair. That's because I was sleeping on it. So, you know, whatever. And I was just like, girl, go cry somewhere else. I mean, I know she, the only thing that I liked Jacqueline for last season was that she was bringing awareness to autism. That was it. Other than that, I said, girl, what's your purpose? But, um... They got rid of Cal Cal Caroline and her family. They got rid of Jacqueline, which does include Jacqueline. But, bitch, fuck all that. Because now they got Dina is back. I was like, yes. And y'all know Dina and Caroline didn't get along like after the first season. And even in the interview, <laughs> the person that was in her confessionals, the producer, whoever was talking to her in the confessional, was like, so how was your relationship with Caroline? She was like... I said, oops, if looks can talk, because, bitch, you just said a whole bunch in that one look like, bitch, don't even bring that hoe up. I said, damn, I really want to know exactly what happened, because they've been not getting along for a long ass time. It's always one half, one side that's just more fucked up than the other. Okay, fuck that. But, um, yeah, we got that. Then we get three new people. Kathy and Richie, they gone. 
Jacqueline is gone. We get three new people. We get Amber, who was an old friend of uh, Melissa, you know, was actually part of Melissa's uh, wedding and a friend before she got married. And they've been friends up until the... They've been friends, but, you know, sometimes friends just lose their touch. And it's not that they stop being friends. They just stop speaking. You know, shit happens and, you know, stuff like that. That closeness kind of faded away a little bit. And so they reconnecting in this season. And then we get the two twins. The twins, I should say. Uh, Teresa. Teresa. There you go. Teresa and Nicole. Now, Teresa's husband, Zeno, owns a couple of restaurants. And they think they like the king and queen of New Jersey or whatever. Like, they the shot callers and all that shit. Then you got Nicole, who... It's coming out of a marriage, you know, she got two kids, um, she has a boyfriend who actually is best friends with Amber, okay, we got all that logistics there, that's basically it, Dina, you know, she's back, I'm glad she's back, um, let's see what she can stir up, Dina, at that party, Dina had a face on her like, bitch, I don't give a fuck, you know, I was like, Dina is gonna be giving me one, I just hope this season is good, I really do, because we got some fucking characters on here, um, excuse me, um, yeah, Dina been away, you know, she's also going through a divorce because her husband cheated, but she went to this, uh, you know, like a Zen coach or whatever, and basically was like, they still fucking around every now and then, and she don't want to get a divorce at this moment. She's not pushing for a divorce at this moment from her husband for the simple fact that she hasn't found anybody else that she's interested in at the moment, meaning that, you know, she's not rushing to get into a relationship. And, but she does feel like everything is just, everything and everyone is just leaving her and she's just left with her um, animals. You know, her daughter, Gracie, Gracie has grown up a lot since we've seen her in the second season, the first season. She's uh, going to college and, you know, she's getting a divorce, so it's just going to be her. She's not talking to her sister and it's just a mess. And her and Teresa, they've been friends for many, many, many years. So, you know... That's why she's on here. So basically, Teresa has an ally in Dan, um, Dina. And she been had an ally in her even last season. You know, Dina was on Teresa's side and all that shit. But, I mean, that's cool. They friends like that. That's to me, seems like a real friendship. Um, like I said, Melissa and Teresa basically buried the hatchet. They're trying to get along. Um and figure things out and it's a trying time right now because this whole episode mostly was centered around the beginning of the episode a little bit of the middle and the end especially was centered around the fact that joe and Teresa may be going to jail now we already knew if you've seen the press and all the stuff that's been coming out before the season you know what's going on you know they've been convicted and found guilty of some stuff and they said they you know fraud and, and all that crap and basically, they are going to go to jail, and I think they're going to do it like one parent go to jail, then the next parent go to jail, so that, that there's somebody in the household. You know, correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm wrong, in the comments, respectfully. But, um, yeah, and at the very beginning, they had the news conference on showing them walking to the uh, courthouse and join Melissa in their room looking at this stuff. So Melissa calls up Teresa like, you know, is this true? She was like, girl, now, you know, they leak shit to the press and it ain't even, we ain't even have, you know, we ain't even give our statements and all that shit or whatever the fuck she said. Mind you, Gia is sitting right there and they got this shit on speakerphone. Now, I know it's probably a rule that they want them to put it on speakerphone, but I know it's a way that, you know, they can listen to the conversation without putting it on speakerphone. They can listen to both sides without putting it on speakerphone because I just felt the need. I just felt like Gia didn't need to be sitting there listening to this. And she's already emotional. And she got so, she was crying and everything. She was like, you know, asking her what's going on. And Teresa was trying to sugarcoat it, sugarcoat it. And she was like, Mama, I know what's going on. I'm not stupid, okay? And she just broke down crying. I was like, oh, my God. You know, every time that little girl, like, I'm telling you, we always been saying this. The kids knows what's going on. They may not say it. They may not, um, you know, you may not think that they know, but they'll act out. And that girl, she knows exactly what's going on. She knows that her parents may be leaving her for a certain amount of time. 
over some bullshit that they could have prevented, okay? And when people do these crimes or whatever, they don't think ahead, especially once they have a family. They don't think how it affect their family. They think about the now and, you know, what they need right now, and they don't think about the long term. And it was just sad, you know, that aspect. Let me tell you something. Little Melania is seven years old, and the little girl, she needs to be popped in the mouth, okay? I'm just saying she needs to be popped in the mouth because her mouth is a little bit too much. She didn't want to do her homework. She wanted Gabriella to do the homework for her and all this shit. She wanted to go watch TV and all this crap. She calling people buttholes, and then when they was getting ready for the family portrait, they getting the head done. She was like, she told the, uh, the makeup artist or the hairdresser, one of them, Oh, you got a big butt just like my mama. Oh, don't mess up my stuff and all that shit. Her mouth was just going. I said, what? Pop her in the mouth, okay? Or tap her ass or something because she is doing the most. And she been cons I will give her this. She's been consistent because the little bitch, mm, I don't want to call nobody child a bitch. But the little girl been like that since the damn time she started being able to talk. I was just like, uh. And they just let them run wild. It just don't make no sense. But okay. You know, Melissa and Joe, they good in their relationship. Amber, you know, when we get introduced to Amber, we can already tell Amber is wound a little bit too tight. Amber needs a chill pill. Amber is like a little OCD with it. <laughs> when her husband came up in there and um had that pig and the way she was like, oh my God, oh my God. And then the little girl started. I thought she overreacted a little bit. I can expect the little kids to be doing some shit like that, but she overreacted a little bit. And then they just put the dead-ass pig right on top of the counter. The dog was sitting there like, mm-hmm, now if I jump this way, no, scratch that. Let me jump 45 degrees to the left, and I can just get a chunk out of the motherfucking stomach. There you go, bitch. Dinner. Um, no, <laughs> don't do that. But, um... She she looked like she going to get cause some drama because she's like very, she's wound very tight. That's what it seems like. She was having this party that she is uh, a harvest party. She was inviting all the girls to. She invited Melissa to and she said Melissa, you can invite anybody that you want. Melissa um talked to um Teresa and was like, "You want to come?" She was like, "I got this event that I'm going to with uh I'm I'm doing something with Dina." And she was like, "Invite Dina too." And I was like, okay, I like the fact that y'all getting along like this. It's kind of weird, but go ahead. We don't want to start the episode off with no drama. And so basically, her and Dina showed up. And it was like, um, do you, first of all, she said, you going, how do you feel about going out in public or whatever? You think people are going to be saying something about you and all this stuff. And she was like, fuck that. And I was like, girl, yeah, you can't be, you know, locking yourself up. You know, shit happens. Move the fuck on and live your life. Don't let that stop you. And sure enough, when they get to the damn party, soon as she came in, oh my God, I, uh, I can't believe this shit. I didn't even know that she was going to show up. She had the nerve to show up, babes. Oh my God, look who it is. Look who it is. Mad you. I probably would have said the same thing. I would have been like, bitch, look who the fuck just came up in here. Ain't she supposed to be going to jail? <laughs> hey, girl. <laughs> mm hmm. Them shoes look nice. You better enjoy this party while you can, because you don't ever know when it might be your last. That's me. But, you know, I mean, everybody probably would have reacted that way. But then again, you know, she expected it, and she made the best out of it. She didn't make no scene. She went around talking to everybody. Um, the two twins, Teresa and uh, Nicole, let's get it right, because it's not Teresa. It's Teresa, as she said. You know. <laughs> Amber had a little issue with them because she was like, I did say that they can invite somebody, but the people that they invited, they have no fucking class. Like, bitch, you got food on the floor, you're stumping your shoes off and all this shit on the floors, and, and just, just, just a goddamn mess, putting crumbs everywhere. And I was like, oh, okay, you know, we're going to see how these two girls, like, Teresa and Nicole seem like they're going to be some trouble, you know, but they seem like they're going to be a little fun a little bit, like the comedic relief. Um... Teresa's husband was a goddamn mess. He was drunk all the, already and wanted to leave early. And um, that was basically it about what happened at that, that part. And then, you know, if I'm all over the place, forgive me, y'all. But next thing they had the, the show ended, the first episode ended with um, the family portrait. 
that Joe and Teresa was having with his family. It was his grandmother's 80th birthday. And like Teresa said, they mostly got the whole family together for her birthday, but also for Joe. And they all dressed in black and black and blue jeans. And then they had the grandma in a red shirt and her blue jeans so she could stand out in the middle. And it was just so cute. It was a big-ass family. I was like, shit, you could never get my family together like that without something popping the fuck off. But, you know, it was really nice the way that everybody came together. The aunts, the cousins, the uncles and daddies and grandfathers and uh, 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 grandmother and all that shit, mama, daddy. That was real nice that they did that and was able to put that together. And, um, you know, little Gia, she had her moment because Joe came up there and gave a little speech and how when everything goes down, you know, this group of people, my family is always there for me. And then you had the little blurbs here and there with Melissa and Joe talking about how, you know, regardless of what we're going through, we family and family, no matter what, we stick together and in the time of need, we always there. And I was like, okay, that's cool. Um, I hope don't nothing happen in the middle of this season that make them flip and everybody's still going at each other again. Reignite that old shit um drama between Teresa Joe and um Melissa. I really don't because that shit was tiring as fuck when we was going through it. Okay, we was like, God damn, can y'all get this shit over and done with? But um, after that, you know, Joe had a little talk with Gia. Gia cried. They both cried. That was cute. And, um, you know, I bet you now he would think twice before he do some shit. <laughs> but, and then the father was being so supportive of Joe. And that was real nice. But it was also sad at the same time because... Before the show came on, and they did put it in remembrance of um, his father because the father recently passed away. And, I mean, he was outside doing some gardening or something, I think, at Teresa and Joe's house and just killed over and passed away. Like, it was just, I think he had a massive heart attack or a stroke or something. I don't know. Either way, it was very unfortunate. But at least he got that moment where all of them was together. Um, I don't know what else to say about this, but... It was a cute little opening episode, you know, not too much. They were just introducing us to the new players and catching us up on what everybody's been doing. Leave in the comments how you feel about everybody now that you saw, you know, the new people. Um, who do you think you're going to like? Who you think you're going to dislike? How do you think the season's going to flow? Just your honest opinion. And, um, yeah, I will see you guys later. Peace.